So I wanted to show how to build stuff correctly, or at least how to give a brief rundown of how to build correctly so you can get started. Um, when it comes to building impacts day, the thing about it is physics is a real part of it. So in some games, like in Pale World, you can create a tower very easily by stacking thing, you know, stacking blocks on top of each other, things like that. And you can build it up very tall, very quickly, and there's no real physics forcing you to do it in any certain way. But in PAX Day, there is uh, some physics that are at play. And I wanted to sh give you a little show, um, a visual explanation. So I have four plots, and my four plots are already used up. I was going to show you from start to finish, but... I'm just going to explain it. So, first you build the crafting hammer with the first that's the first thing you do in this game. And it is on my hotbar on number 8. This is you gather some nice stones and some wood. And then you hit tab. And then you see up there all those different tabs that you can select. So you click craft construction hammer. And you can see that it takes two sap wood and one nice stone to create a construction hammer. So when you when you first come into the game, the first thing you want to make is the construction hammer. Then after you build your construction hammer, you're ready to claim your plot. So what we're going to do is um, you're going to equip your construction hammer. So I'm going to press 8 because it's on my hotbar on number 8. Now that it's equipped, I can claim a plot. So I will right click. And up here, there's more tabs, so props, you know, things like bear rug, furniture, chests, things like that. And then there's the items you can craft for, you know, the crafting items that you need to craft other stuff with. So like, you know, alchemy tables to make potions, um, you know, leather working to make leather armor, tailoring to make clothes, you know, cloth type clothes, <clears throat> and then construction this is where you come to actually choose like your walls, your stairs, your uh, roof, things like that. But before you can construct anything, you have to claim a plot. So you can go up here, click the plots button, and then you're gonna have. It's gonna. It's not gonna look like this. I have four plots. You might have one or two or three plots. Um, so however many plots you do have will show up here. You click it. And then you'll come out and you'll move your hammer around and you'll be able to select a ground to claim it as your own plot to build on. See in the background there, those orange plots? Because when you have your construction hammer equipped, you can see everybody else's claimed plot as well. So all of those orange lights in the background are plots that are claimed by other players. That's where their building um, structures are. So yours, where you are capable of building, will show up. So see this light here, the light where we've claimed our plot, this area, this is where we can build. If it's in an area that you cannot build in, um, like the Wildlands, for example, you can't claim a plot in the Wildlands, the ring, as you move your construction hammer around, will be orange. And if you try to select it, it'll say that you can't build there, you can't claim that plot, or whatever message that comes up, but it won't let you claim that plot. So when you find a location that you can claim, you, you click it, you left click, boom, and that, that's now your plot. So when it comes to the building of it, we're going to right click, come to crafting, or construction, right, <clears throat> we're going to come over to construction, and then first you're probably going to want to lay down some foundations. This might not be the case for everybody. A lot of this is personal preference. A lot of people will build all of their stuff right out in the grass and they won't even build a house or a castle or any kind of structure whatsoever. And a lot of other people will just do these um, foundation pieces and make like parking lots to just put all their stuff on a flat surface. So a lot of that's preference. So you can move it around, see how I can choose where it is, but I can also hold Alt and with the mouse wheel I can scroll it and you see how it turns red you can't build where it's red and see how it's green there and you're want you're probably wondering why is it green why can we build when it's floating in the air it's because it's not actually floating in the air it's because the a corner of it 
is resting on this ledge over here. And cliffs count as foundational pieces. So if you want to build the tallest buildings that you are capable of building, then you're going to need to find a nice flat cliff side to build off of because those cliff walls count as foundation pieces. And otherwise, without a cliff, you can only go up about seven floors. Structurally speaking, that's all this game will allow. You can't go up any higher than that because the physics just won't let you. At least not with the building structures that we have in the game currently that I've seen. I haven't seen anybody who's been able to build over seven floors um, yet. But you hold Alt and then move your mouse wheel. You can choose where your block is going to go. I'm going to choose it like right there. And I'm going to put one next to it. Now you can't build outside of your zone. So th there's, it allows a little bit of overhang. And in some cases... You'll come back later and this piece might be disappeared. It might be gone because you might have had it hanging outside of your zone a little too much. So be very careful about that. Don't You don't want to build anything across these lines if you absolutely don't have to because they might disappear on you. So we're going to just build a couple of things here. Now we, now we got, you know, let's say, you know, say we're happy with this. Okay, we're happy with this, so now we need some walls. But how are we going to do the walls? Now if I wanted to use these kind of walls, they do not provide very good structure. They're not very strong. You can't build them up very high at all. Um, so when you're building instead of using these flimsy walls you really need to focus on how you're going to use physics to structure your building so a lot of you might opt to use these every so often and then put walls in between those that way you can build up higher but you see that you see how that turns into a lighter green stacking it on top of each other and then go up further and it turns orange and if you go up again it'll be you know it'll be like it is up there floating in the sky it'll eventually turn red so it'll be like orange yellow red yeah see that's because you can't just stack items on top of each other it's not structurally sound so for a lot of new people playing this game, they're like, oh man, I'm trying to build my house and it's not working. What is going on? And what you actually need to do is learn how to structure things correctly with support structures as well. So a big thing is support beams. And you'll have to play with these, figure out what works for your own structure. And it is very difficult I'm moving the mouse wheel to spin it around to kind of get it where I want it. The building in this game can be pretty complicated. And sometimes, sometimes you may need one of the tricks that I've learned is when I'm trying to get something in a very specific location, um, you may need to put a temporary structure behind you to put your body up against so you can get a clear view of what you're trying to do and that's something a lot of people haven't quite figured out um, I've, I've been wandering around this world from map to map if you've been watching my videos you know it I haven't shown my interactions with most people though but uh, I have had many new players ask me how to build walls correctly in this game and that's why I'm making this video because there's a lot of little tips and tricks about it because you need to use support beams you and if you're planning on depend it depends on how you're trying to build it if you want to build a very tall building you need support beams and then if you're trying to place something in a very specific spot you may need to put a temporary wall up to put your character against so you can get this type of first person view and then when you're done, just tear that temporary wall down. And then I'm going to tear all this down because I don't want this here. I just wanted to give you that quick explanation. 
Okay, in this room, this is our clan hall storage room. Look at the ceiling. I'm going to put my character against the wall so we can get this first person view. See the support beams? Look at all those support beams. Going across the ceiling to hold up the whole second level. There's another level on top of this level. And we got all these support structures to hold up the next floor. And then one thing you don't see is inside the walls. Behind this concrete is tons of support beams. And I kind of showed you a little bit what that was like um, a moment ago. Um, so I want to show you how the inside of those walls look because you can't really tell I mean you can't tell at all because of the concrete walls so how the inside of my walls look like you saw the support beams in the ceiling but inside the walls is a totally different story because what they look like is more like this and this is not how I did it but that's more what it, I'm just giving you an idea of what it looked like it kind of look in those walls it looks more like this and what we did so how the inside of those walls look is more like this then we would have our supports inside you know something like this we'd have the you know the cross beams not that one have the cross beams and you have to play around with these figure out what works for your structure make sure they're all nice and bright green that means as long as it's bright green that means your supports are good and you'll know for sure if you go to make the second floor and if the second floor is all red then you messed up but the inside of our walls, you saw the ceilings, but inside the walls, it looks more like this. And then we'd have like these pieces here. Just to give you an idea it's more like that so like you see the walls you see the concrete in that room but you don't see what's inside the walls and this is a very nasty um, display of that but I'm just making a point that you can't see what's behind this you know the concrete depends on what you're trying to build and what you're trying to support. So you might want some walls that are a lot of support beams and not so much concrete, or you might want to have walls that are a lot of support beams like inside the concrete. And it, it just depends on your preference, what you're trying to build, what you're trying to hold up, but you just need to think about the physics behind it. The whole point is, if you're trying to make a second floor, then your walls need to be structural, structurally sound um, using physics in order to hold up that second floor. So you need to think of that. If you're going to build a castle and you're going to build you know, four or five floors, then you're going to have to think very carefully how you're going to make your walls to support each floor. And I just wanted to let you know that that is a thing in this game. So when your pieces turn red, they're going to disintegrate. They're not going to stay there. Um, and you, you want to keep all of your structures as green as possible. <laughs> and that's really the trick, is to keep your stuff green. Um, when it starts changing colors, that's no good. All right, thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, follow, do all the good stuff. I appreciate you. Um, if you're playing on the Prometheus server, I would appreciate it if you joined the Discord that I just recently made. Uh, I would really like to get the whole Prometheus community in the Discord at some point. Um, and thanks again for watching, and have a good one.